why aren't there giant dogs, like lions or tigers? The moonlit savanna trembles with a roar. A lion announces its reign. In the distance, a wolf howls back, fierce yet far smaller. Close your eyes and imagine if that wolf were as colossal as the lion. What if there were dogs the size of tigers prowling the night? Why did evolution crown cats as giant solitary hunters, but left dogs as nimble pack predators? Could such titanic canines have ever existed, only to vanish into legend? These questions pull us into an ancient mystery. Why aren't there giant dogs like lions or tigers? The answer lies entwined in eons of evolution, the mechanics of muscle and bone, and even the hand of human domestication. The journey to that answer begins long ago when cats and dogs first trod diverging paths. Different Paths to Predatory Power Tens of millions of years ago, the ancestors of today's cats and dogs parted ways. Though both belong to the carnivore order, carnivora, they haven't shared a common ancestor for over 40 million years. Big cats like lions and tigers evolved as separate species, diverging around 6 million years ago into many sizes, including the huge apex predators we know today. Canines, the dog family, followed a different route. The gray wolf emerged roughly 1 million years ago, and much more recently, about 20,000 to 40,000 years ago, wolves were domesticated into dogs. Unlike cats, all domestic dogs remain one species, Canis familiaris, their variety in size and shape coming from human breeding rather than natural evolution. In other words, giant wild cats are products of natural evolution, whereas any giant dogs are human-made. Early humans selectively bred dogs for certain traits, but nature never produced a wild canine species as massive as a lion or tiger. This split in evolutionary journeys set the stage. Felines and canines became very different predators. Our cuddly house cats have formidable cousins – lions, tigers, leopards – each a distinct species shaped by evolutionary pressure to dominate their environment. Their formidable size evolved to optimize their predatory prowess as solo hunters. In contrast, there are no naturally occurring big dog species to rival those cats. The largest wild canids, such as the gray wolf, simply never reach the gargantuan proportions of big cats. Even the biggest wolves, weighing 80 kilograms or 175 pounds, look small beside a tiger that can exceed 260 kilograms. The answer becomes clearer when we examine how these animals hunt and survive. Evolution didn't make giant dogs because it had a different plan for canines, a plan centered on cooperation endurance, and a lighter frame built for the chase. A lion's explosive power on display. Big cats are built for solitary ambush, muscle, stealth, and lightning bursts of speed to take down prey. In the wild, cats and dogs evolved contrasting hunting styles, and those strategies imposed very different demands on their bodies. Big cats like tigers, leopards, and jaguars are ambush predators. They creep close to their prey, hidden by brush or shadows, then unleash a sudden burst of speed and power. If you've ever watched your house cat stock a toy, you've seen a miniature version of this tactic. These felines rely on short, explosive sprints and an overpowering pounce to tackle prey in one swift move. Accordingly, nature equipped them with stocky muscular builds, long retractable claws, and powerful jaws. The tiger's forelimbs and paws are like a wrestler's arms capable of grappling and subduing prey much larger than themselves. Their sharp claws act like daggers, and their long canines fang teeth, pierce vital spots. In fact, big cats have larger canine fangs proportionally, than canines themselves, an ironic truth reflected in their very names. All this musculature and weaponry means extra body weight, but for a cat that ambushes and quickly throttles its prey, being big is a huge advantage. Now, enter the wolf, a cursorial, distance-running predator built very differently. Wild dogs – wolves, African wild dogs, etc. – usually hunt in open terrain where hiding is hard. They don't depend on surprise attacks. Instead, they employ endurance and teamwork. A wolf pack will run a large prey animal, like a deer, for miles, harrying it relentlessly. 
Rather than delivering a single knockout blow, they wear the prey down over time. This hunting strategy favors a leaner, lighter body. Speed over distance, stamina, and group coordination are the keys to a wild dog's success, not sheer size. In fact, extra bulk would slow them down and consume too much energy during a long chase. As one wildlife expert quipped, marathon runners don't look like bodybuilders, do they? Just so, a wolf the size of a lion would struggle to keep up the chase. Size is not an asset for endurance hunting, and through millennia, natural selection balanced out the optimal canine physique to be smaller and more agile than that of big cats. A pack of wolves on the move. Canine predators rely on endurance and cooperation, chasing prey over long distances, a task better suited to lean, mid-sized bodies than to giant frames. The differences go beyond muscle and stamina. Big cats have razor-sharp claws that stay sheathed when not in use, so they remain sharp, ideal for snagging and holding prey or delivering slashing wounds. Canines, however, have blunt, non-retractable claws, better for traction and running but far less effective as weapons. A lion can swipe with force sufficient to break a zebra's spine. A wolf's swipe won't do much. Instead, the wolf must bite. Accordingly, canids evolved strong jaws and specialized carnassial teeth for slicing flesh and even cracking bones. Yet even their bite strategy reflects endurance hunting. Wolves often latch onto noses or flanks, hanging on while the prey struggles, whereas a leopard goes for the throat to kill swiftly. In simple terms, felines are power hitters, delivering a single decisive strike, while canines are tireless boxers trading many smaller blows over time. A huge muscular body is great for the former, but a liability for the latter. Every extra kilogram means more energy burned per mile. An endurance predator can't afford that inefficiency. Thus, through the lens of biomechanics and ecology, we see why lions bulked up into kings of beasts, while wolves remained fleet-footed hunters. Each family found a different sweet spot between size and survival. Prehistoric Canine Titans The absence of giant dogs today doesn't mean nature never tried that experiment. Turn back the clock to the Miocene Epoch, about 15 million years ago in North America, and you'd find a fearsome creature prowling the plains. Pision Haydeni, sometimes nicknamed the bone-crushing dog, Pisian was not a true dog of the genus Canis, but a large canid of the Borophagini subfamily, an ancient cousin of modern dogs. And it was huge. The largest Episcian species weighed between 200 and 300 pounds, more than twice as heavy as a gray wolf and about as large as a full-grown lioness. This formidable canid had extraordinarily powerful jaws and teeth built for cracking bone leading paleontologists to compare it to a hyena or even a big cat in appearance and feeding style. In fact, one fossil species, Episcian haydeni, was described as a monster almost the size of a modern African lion. So giant dogs did exist in prehistoric times, at least in form if not in name. What happened to these titans? Episcian's story offers a telling lesson. For millions of years, Episcian thrived as a top predator in North America, preying on large animals. But it lived in an era before true big cats had arrived on the continent, when felids like saber-toothed cats and early lions eventually spread into the Americas, they proved to be fierce competition. The cats were highly effective ambush killers, likely muscling in on the same prey Episcian hunted. Suddenly, Episcian faced rivals that could do the job better. The fossil record suggests that as these big cats proliferated, the oversized, bone-crushing canids declined. In evolutionary terms, the cats stole the niche. Additionally, climate changes toward the end of the Miocene reduced the abundance of the large prey that giants like Episcian needed. With less big game to eat and new competitors in town, the giant canids couldn't survive. They died out, letting smaller canids thrive in their wake. Nature, it seems, decided that the future of the dog family would belong to swift wolves and foxes rather than lumbering dog lions. Episcian wasn't the only large canid to walk the earth. The Pleistocene epoch gave us the dire wolf, Canis dirus, heavier than today's gray wolves, 
but still only about 60 to 80 kilograms, not in the Lions League. Dire wolves hunted Ice Age megafauna alongside saber-toothed cats and American lions, yet like many Pleistocene giants, they vanished about 13,000 years ago, likely due to the combined pressure of climate shifts and human interference. Our ancestors were competing hunters. After that wave of extinctions, no truly huge canids remained. The canines we have today are the descendants of those smaller, more adaptable survivors. In summary, prehistoric dogs did grow large, but evolutionary pressures, from competition to climate, ultimately pruned them back down. The giant canine experiment failed, whereas the big cat model persisted. Domestication and the Absence of Wild Giant Dogs There's one more twist in this tale – humans. When wolves eventually crossed paths with early humans, a remarkable thing happened – domestication. We didn't domesticate lions or tigers, for obvious reasons, but we formed a partnership with wolves that gave rise to domestic dogs. As soon as humans entered the picture, the evolutionary trajectory of dogs changed dramatically. Instead of natural selection in the wild, artificial selection took over. Humans bred dogs for usefulness and companionship. Traits like loyalty, herding ability, guarding, and yes, sometimes size. We did create some giant dog breeds. Think of Great Danes, Mastiffs, or the Irish Wolfhound. However, these enormous breeds are still one species and were achieved by selectively breeding from smaller ancestral stock. In essence, the giant dogs we know today are man-made, not products of a long, wild evolution. A Great Dane exists because people wanted a big dog, not because nature demanded a lion-sized canine. Now consider the flip side. In the wild, without human intervention, large size was never favored for canines. If any wolf population began trending larger, they might struggle to catch enough food or face ecological disadvantages. And natural selection would trim that trait. Furthermore, as humans spread across the globe, any hypothetical giant wolves may have been actively hunted or outcompeted. Early humans respected and feared large predators. We exterminated big cats in many regions, and a giant wolf would have been an even bigger threat to us and our livestock. The wolves that survived into modern times tended to be those that kept to moderate sizes and could coexist or even cooperate with humans. And once domesticated dogs became widespread, there was simply no ecological niche for a new giant canine predator. Humans ourselves became the apex predator in most environments, often with the help of our medium-sized dog partners by our side. In the end, the reason we have mighty lions and tigers but no equally giant wild dogs comes down to evolutionary specialization. Big cats evolved to fill the role of a solitary muscular ambush predator. Their lineage produced some of the largest carnivores to walk land because that size helped them rule their domains. Dogs and their kin evolved along a different track, one of pack hunting, endurance, and later partnership with humans, where smaller size was advantageous and sufficient. Evolutionary biology, biomechanics, and even the story of human domestication all point to the same outcome. Cats got bigger because being big made them better hunters. Dogs stayed smaller because being quick and social made them better hunters. When canines did grow truly massive in the distant past, they either lost out to the competition, the feline kind, or to changing climates. <laughs>